Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Because of the never-ending growth of the human population, our cities and urban areas are expanding. This normally leads to deforestation and growth in agricultural areas, and this leaves a lot less space for wildlife. This is one of the many reasons why a large number of species are threatened today, but surprisingly some species have been able to adapt. Plenty of animals such as rats and pigeons have been able to thrive in our cities, and although they are the most famous examples, there are some surprising examples of species that have been able to deal with an increased urbanisation. I'll be going through just a few of these species today, as I'll be going through five species that have adapted to urban areas. And for our first species we'll be heading to North America, as we have the American Black Bear. This medium sized bear is endemic to North America, and ranges from Canada in the north to Mexico in the south. They are predominantly found in forests, where they mainly feed on fruits, nuts, shoots and vegetation, but will also take large mammals such as deer, and will hunt salmon moving up rivers to spawn. On this diet they can reach a maximum size of around 250 kilograms, which is around the same weight as an okapee or a Brazilian tapir. Although this is a very respectable size, most specimens are smaller than this, and the black bear is the smallest yet most common of the bears in North America. Sometimes the ranges of grizzly bears and black bears overlap, which can sometimes lead to confrontation. As the grizzly bear bears are a lot larger, the black bears tend to flee, or simply avoid the grizzly bears. This smaller size does come with some upsides, as they're more agile than the grizzly bears being great climbers and also great swimmers. To help find their food in the wild, black bears have a great sense of smell, but this sense of smell is also what's brought them into contact with humans, as they're known to travel many miles to invade gardens and campsites at the chance of an easy meal. These bears are also fully capable of breaking into cars and homes, and eating all they can before leaving. As humans are very wasteful, there's normally large amounts of leftover food in our city. Cities. This attracts bears from all over, meaning that more and more people are coming into contact with bears. Events such as wildfires and large-scale logging operations have forced more bears into the cities. And although it was originally thought that these black bears wouldn't thrive in our cities, a 2003 study in the Lake Tahoe area revealed that black bears not only survive in our concrete jungles, but they grow bigger and stronger than wilder bears. Not only were these city bears larger, but they're also breeding at an earlier age, as black bears don't usually begin breeding until they're four years old. But bears in the city were breeding as young as two years old. So these urban black bears were larger, stronger, and produced more cubs. But these stats don't show the whole story. These city bears have a much higher mortality rate, with most of the causes of death being traffic related, contact with humans, or eating poisoned or tainted food. Because of these factors, it's unclear if the wild black bears are doing better than the city black bears. But nonetheless, these black bears have found a way to adapt to our urban environments. But for our next species, we can head to pretty much anywhere in the world, as we have the deer. There are around 43 species of deer in the world today, with the largest member of the deer family being the moose, and one of the smallest species being the pudu. These deer species can be found in a wide range of habitats, and are mostly known for being browsers, feeding on a variety of grasses, shrubs, and trees. Most deer species are herd animals, and are known for being very skittish and flighty. In some areas, this behaviour has changed in recent years, as more deers are moving into cities and urban areas. In some ways, we have forced deer into urban areas, as an increase in population also leads to an increase in agricultural areas. Most deer can't thrive in these landscapes, so seek a new place to live. In some cases, deer voluntarily move into cities as they come with some surprising benefits. Although there's a risk of getting hit by cars, there are no predators in built-up cities. In the harsh winter months, cities are also warmer than forested areas. Large gardens with plenty of plant life are perfect for these deer, and they're more than happy to feed on people's plants. There are thought to be around 500,000 white-tailed deer in the US in 1900, but because they are able to thrive in urban areas, there are thought to be around 30 million white-tailed deer in the US today. There's also huge population growths of seeker deer in Nara, Japan, as these deer are seen as sacred and are often fed by many tourists. I have to admit I've been part of this problem, and the deer in Nara are far from skittish, and we even headbutt and bite you if you don't give them food. So although it may seem very unlikely, deer have proved that they can thrive in urban areas. But for our next species, we'll be heading to South and Southeast Asia as we have the rhesus macaque. This monkey has the widest geographical range of all non-human primates. They can be found in a great diversity of altitudes and habitats, from grasslands to forested areas, and today even large cities. In the wild, their diet mainly consists of plant material, as well as insects, crustaceans, and birds' eggs. These food items can often be hard to catch and find, so many populations have moved into cities for the easy life. These monkeys tend to be found around temples and touristy areas, where they're seen as sacred so they are protected and sometimes fed. These macaques used to venture into cities to feed and eventually return to the forested areas, but in recent years, more and more of these monkeys have chosen to stay in the cities, where they can have negative impacts on the people living there. They are known to hassle people and still 
steal food from them, and in some rare cases they will even bite humans. In one city in India, 95% of people interviewed said that they had been harassed by monkeys, and some had even been bitten. As these monkeys are so agile, they can easily traverse across cities, and it's almost a home away from home for them. So although they can be a real pain, these macaques have adapted very well to our cities. But again, for our next species, we'll be heading to pretty much anywhere around the world, as we have the peregrine falcon. The peregrine falcon is one of the most widespread of all the birds of prey, being found almost anywhere apart from the coldest of areas, and parts of South America and Sahara and Africa. The peregrine falcon is the fastest animal in the world, and can reach speeds of up to 242 miles per hour when hunting its prey. To be able to go this fast, it needs certain adaptations, such as its nostrils, which are able to reduce the change in air pressure when moving at such speeds. These nostrils are so impressive that they've even influenced the design of jet engines. Peregrines are normally associated with large open areas, such as highlands or coasts. They're known to nest on sea cliffs, quarry faces, and cliff edges, but in more recent years they've even started to nest in our cities. In the UK, before the 1990s, the peregrine falcon's numbers had been in decline. This was mainly due down to persecution and the effects of pesticides in the countryside. This meant that the only successful peregrine falcons in the UK were in coastal areas or were near cities. Peregrines usually hunt by searching for their prey, either from a very high perch or from a great height in the air. These peregrines then swoop down at high speed to hit their prey, which either stuns them or kills them instantly. In coastal areas there is an abundance of seabirds, and in our urban areas there is an abundance of pigeons and doves. In a way it's unsurprising that they do so well in cities, as even though both these landscapes look very different, they come with the same benefits for the peregrine. There are now thought to be over 30 breeding pairs of peregrine falcons in London alone, and this number looks to rise in the future. But for our final species, we'll move to pretty much anywhere in the northern hemisphere, as we have the red fox. The red fox is the largest of the true foxes, and is one of the most widely distributed carnivores in the world. One of the many reasons behind Behind this success is that they're so adaptable. They can be found in a wide variety of habitats, where they mainly feed on small mammals, birds and reptiles. Red foxes are one of the most famous urban animals, as they can be found in many towns and cities across the world. One of the reasons why they love cities so much is that there is an abundance of food. This food not only comes from leftovers from humans, but also from other animals that thrive in our cities, such as mice, rats and pigeons. Foxes also do so well because they are very streetwise. In most cases they are able to avoid traffic, and their agility means it's very easy for them to move across across urban areas. Although many foxes are spotted in cities, they don't usually live there, as they often dig out dens on the edge of cities, such as railway embankments, parks and in people's gardens. In 2011, when the Shard skyscraper was being built, a fox moved into the 72nd floor, surviving only on the food scraps left by workers. This shows just how fearless they can be in urban areas, and unfortunately if our population continues to grow at the rate that it is at the moment, foxes in cities will be a more common sight. But that's about it for this video, there are plenty of other urban animals that I could could have included in this list. So if you liked it, let me know in the comments down below and I can make a part two. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.